like to call to order our, our board meeting for June 2nd, 2020. Pursuant to the governor's executive order N29-20, dated March 17th, 2020, the board is authorized to hold this meeting via teleconferencing, video conferencing, and to make this meeting accessible electronically to all members of the public seeking to observe and address the board. I would like to call the meeting of the Board of Trustees of the Fullerton Joint Union High School District to order. Please rise and say the flag salute with me, and after the flag salute, we're gonna have a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now please join me in a moment of silence for David Test. David Arthur Test was hired in 1966-1967 school year as a teacher at Troy High School, where he taught health education. In the 1974-75 school year, Mr. Test was promoted to assistant principal. Following a short break in service, Mr. Test rejoined the district and served as assistant principal at Troy High School and a part-time principal at Sonora High School. After 26 years of service, Mr. Test retired on July 31st, 1996. Mr. Test passed away on Tuesday, April 29th. Sympathy and support are offered to the, to the family and friends of Arthur Test. Thank you. Um, attendance, I would like to ask that each board member answer that you are present if you can hear me when I call your name. Ms. Bushy? Present. Thank you. Ms. Foley? Present. Ms. Klatsker? Present. Dr. Zhang? Need to unmute, Chester. Present. Thank you. I would like to ask that any board member of any member of the board speak up at this time if you have not been able to clearly hear each other. Hearing no com. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. Hearing no comment, the record should reflect that the board members present have indicated that they're able to hear each other. All votes taken during this teleconference portion of the meeting must be taken by a roll call vote. Ms. Harder will be administering those roll call votes. From closed session. The board took action on compensation agreement and general release of Ed Code 2019-2020 number 241. The roll call vote was as follows. Unanimous ayes. I would like to ask our board if there's any acknowledgement of correspondence to the board. Hearing none and seeing none, um, we're gonna move to the approval of the agenda. I would like for a, to call for a motion and a second to approve the agenda as amended. Item 6.2.1, employee, employee, employer employee personnel report has been amended. Copies are available upon request. Move approval. Moved by Ms. Yeah. Second. Seconded by Ms. Smalley. Is there any discussion on the agenda? Okay, I would like to call for a roll call vote. Ms. Carter? Yes. Mrs. Bushy? Yes. Ms. Foley? Yes. Ms. Klasker? Yes. Dr. Jang? Yes. Thank you. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the minutes. I would like to call for a motion and a second to approve the minutes of the following meetings. May 12th regular board meeting and the May 19th special board meeting. Would you like to take those together, Mr. Montoya? I so. Yes. I would move approval of both of the minutes. And, and, second. and seconded by Dr. Zhang. Is there any discussion on these two um, minutes for these two meetings? 
I would like to call on Ms. Uh, Harder for a roll call vote. Mr. Montoya? Yes. Mrs. Bushy? Yes. Ms. Foley? Yes. Ms. Klasker? Yes. Dr. Jane? Yes. Thank you. Okay, and now at 2.6, timely information from the board and superintendent. I'd like to first start with our board and have if there's any timely information you'd like to share with us. Okay. Hearing none, I would like to ask our superintendent. You're on mute. Sure. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. I just want to thank our entire district um for us the, the way we transition to distance learning in such a short period of time uh distance learning is not perfect it's not as good uh, or as effective as the students being um, personally with the teachers but uh they did a wonderful job in transitioning and working hard and, and doing everything it took and it, it took all the employees in the district it took flexibility from the board very proud of everything that went on uh, since March 13th, since we shut down. And uh, we provided the best education possible to our students. And, and that's all we can ask. So thank you very much again. Thank you, Dr. Scambray. I would like to move um, to updates from our employee and PTSA associations. I would like to start with FSTO. President Angie Senkak sent in a statement. Good evening, President Montoya, trustees, Dr. Scambray and cabinet members. June 1st, 2020 began my three year term as FSTO president and I, find my, I found myself hitting the ground running. FSTO's negotiation team met with the district's negotiation team on May 27th to further discuss proposed changes to special education for mild to moderate students. We are making progress with, the spe with respect to special education language and changes to the contract, but still need to work toward an agreement on both sides. There are also discussions about reopening the school in the fall, as well as athletics and other extracurricular activities that traditionally meet during the summer months. At this point, many options are being researched, but no final decisions ha will be made until there's more direction from the state. We will be meeting again to further discuss our entire contract as much work needs to be done to finalize and ratify a new agreement. FSTO welcomes the opportunity to work with our district school site administrators to facilitate a smooth return to school in the fall, whether it's back on a school, back on the school's campuses or via distance learning model we transition to in the spring and are currently using for summer school. I look forward to working with you all to better serve our students and teachers in the coming years. Thank you, Ms. Senkat, President Senkat. From CSEA Chapter 82, President James Viquez. On behalf of CSEA Chapter 82, I would like to thank Dr. Ed Atkinson, Carl Erickson, and Melinda Rodriguez for the opportunity to have worked with them on the Memorandum of Understanding regarding the COVID-19 pandemic. It was definitely an experience for me and challenging. I would also like to recognize and thank Joe Slyker, CSEA First Vice President, and Carrie Woods, CSEA Second Vice President, for their support and help during the negotiation process. Also our e-board members for the dedication and support as well. Thank you for the opportunity to have, the opportunity to have with you and your staff. Thank you, President Vickers. From the Fullerton Council PTA, co-presidents Wendy Reed and Christy Carter, and the entire Fullerton Council Board. Everyone at Fullerton Council PTA and parents throughout the district would like to thank FJUHSD teachers, admin, and staff for everything they did to finish out the year with distance learning. We know that this was a difficult situation to navigate through and appreciate all the work everyone did. Another thank you for putting together a quarantine style graduation celebration at each school. The Jumbotron was great. The class of 2020 signs for every senior were so special and the virtual graduations complete with speeches made it feel almost like the end of the year, almost like the end of the year should feel. Congratulations 2020. Each spring the Fullerton Council awards scholarships to graduating seniors who are continuing their education with hopes of pursuing a career that will benefit children. Although we couldn't present the scholarship at our luncheon, our scholarship committee did select a few winners and it was tough. And we will be delivering the scholarships along with a 
some new college swag to the winners this week. We will be posting pictures on Facebook page, so please make sure you're following the Fullerton Council PTA. The 2020 Fullerton Council PTA scholarship winners are Jennifer Ho from Troy High School. Jennifer will be attending Stanford. Samuel Ko from Sunny Hills High School. Samuel will be attending Johns Hopkins. Caitlin Chavez from Fullerton High School. Caitlin will be attending UC Davis. Kelly Bender from Troy High School. Kelly will be attending Gonzaga. And Cindy Nguyen from Troy High School. Cindy will be attending UMass Amherst. Congratulations to the winners, and we are so excited to see what the future holds for you. As we wrap up the 2019-2020 school year, we are all feeling thankful for the time and work spent together, and we're looking forward to the beginning of the school year. We hope you all stay safe and healthy, happy and well. Enjoy some much needed downtime and maybe even a little normal summer fun. We look forward to seeing everyone soon. Thank you very much, co-presidents Wendy Reed and Christy Carter from the Fullerton Council Board. <clears throat> At this time, we're in a public comments part of our agenda, and I'd like to ask Ms. Harder, at this point, do we have any public comments to read? Mr. Montoya, we do not have any public comments to read. Thank you. Any comments from our board? Um, under reports 5.4.1, public hearing, 2020-2021 fiscal year budget, Assistant Superintendent of Business Services, Joan Velasco, will give a presentation on this year's or the 2021 fiscal year budget. Here we go. Here you go, Ms. Velasco. <laughs> Good evening. Um, tonight we'll be bringing up the presentation regarding our um, 2021 budget. And I think Weston was going to put it on. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so tonight we're here to discuss what our budget will be like if we go to the next slide. And it will be reporting out where we believe our ending balances will be for this 2019-20 year. We'll be talking about the budget for next year, and then we'll talk about the projections for the following two years. A detailed budget report can actually be found on the district website under business services. So um, that's there for anybody that would like to see more of the details. And tonight we're only going to highlight some of that report. Next slide. So whenever we're building um, a budget, we always have to look at our budget assumptions for revenue and for our total enrollment for 2021, we're anticipating dropping by 81 students, the following year dropping by 95 students, and following year in 22-23 dropping by 82 students. So we're continuing with declining enrollment over the next few years. Our ADA um, is usually about 95-96% of enrollment and you can see those numbers there. We're anticipating an unduplicated percentage remaining around 50%. And the COLA for this um, coming year, we budgeted the 2.31% COLA and then we actually did a 10% reduction to LCFF. And we'll be looking at those numbers shortly. For 21-22, 0% COLA and 22-23, again, 0% COLA. Next slide. Looking at assumptions for our expenditures, uh, consumer price index is what we anticipate prices going up in the following years. And you can see what those percentages are. Our step in column every year, we do have increases for salaries for both certificated and classified. And so these are the percentage e increases for each of the years. We're anticipating a 2% increase for health and welfare for the next three years. And as always, we show you our statutory benefits, which continue to rise. Um, we did get a break for our STRS calculations, a small amount. But again, when you add up all of our percentages for the 2021 year, for certificated, it's a 21.5. The classifieds at 31.8. 
you can see the following year, um, it's the certificated drops a little bit to 20.92 and our, per, our classified goes up to 33.94. And then this final year, our certificated is 23%, so it's increasing. And then our classified is 36.6%. So those are larger increases for us as we move forward. Next slide. So I'm going to change the way this format looks, but I'm going to actually show you all four years at one time so you can get a better picture of what our um, budget is going to look like in the future. Next slide. So looking at the 1920 year, here are what our revenues are looking at. I want to focus first of all on the local control funding formula. For 1920, we received $140.2 million. And as you can see, the cut that we're receiving in LCFF for the 2021 year brings that money down to $128 million. The following year, 126.7, and the 22-23 year at 125.8. The reason LCFF is falling in those last two years is because of the declining enrollment. Our federal revenues, um, current year is 7.1. That drops down to 6.6 .6 for next year. And the reason for that is we had some additional carryover from the 1819 year into the 1920 year. If when we close the books for this year, we have any extra revenue that will then roll over to the 2021 year. On the state revenue, pretty consistent 12.5 for this year and 12.3 for the following years. Local revenue for this year is 13 million. We're budgeting 10.6 in the following year and it stays pretty stable. And the reason for that is we don't book any income for donations um, until we actually receive them. And then our transfers in, currently we're not projecting any money moving in. However, due to the LCFF cut for the 2021 year, we'll be moving roughly $800,000 in from Fund 17 um, for the 2021 year, the 21-22 year, in the 22-23 year, we um, will not be having any additional funds um, from Fund 17, but we will be moving, some, well, it's a small amount left there in Fund 17, but from 17, Fund 20, and Fund 40, we will be moving all $13.1 million into the 22-23 year so that we can meet our expenditures for that year. Next slide. So here are our expenditures. When you're looking at certificated salaries, you can see we're around $70 million for this year, going up slightly due to step and column for the next three years. The same situation for classified salaries, we're roughly 21.6 million, going up slightly for uh, step and column for the following three years. Benefits you can see increasing at a greater rate because of our STRS and PERS um, increases. And so we're going from 44.7 all the way to that third year of $51.1 million. Our books and supplies currently is 10.7. Um, that is down a little bit because of COVID and closing the schools. We have not spent as much as had been budgeted. Next year, that's going up to 11 million. And then it stays pretty consistent up until we get to the 22-23 year. And that's where we'll be needing to make $6.6 .6 million in cuts. So we're dropping that number down to 5.2 million. Those cuts could actually spread among all of these categories, but for now, that's where we're putting it. Our service is another operating cost, 17 million for this year, dropping down to 15.3, and that stays pretty consistent through the rest of those years. Um, slight increases in that third year, uh, they're going up because of the consumer price index. For this year, for our capital outlay, our debt service, our indirect costs, 10.3. Again, those are dropping down to 8 million in the following year, 7.1 in the two out years. The interfund transfers, we currently have $1.6 million. One million of that is going over to our deferred maintenance fund, and 650,000 is going over to fund 40 to fund um, any potential facility needs that we might have in the future. Due to our budget issues that we have in those late years, we are dropping down to the $1 million to deferred revenue for the 21 and 22 and the 22 and 23 school years. Next slide. 
So when you add this all together, I'd like to focus in on the deficit spending. So the third row shows we're actually spending more than we're bringing in by $2.8 million for our current year. Because of the loss of funding in the 2021 year, that deficit is growing drastically to 18 million. The 21-22 year is growing to 21 million. And the reason that it's slowing down in the 7.9 year is, um, sorry, in the 22-23 year to a 7.9 deficit is because we're showing a cut of 6.6 .6 million and we're bringing in $13 million from other funds. If you go to the very last row and we focus on our ending fund balance, you can see how drastically these numbers are changing our ending fund balance. Current year, we're ending up with $52 million, around 30% reserve level. Next year, 34.7, so it's dropping to a 20% reserve level. 21-22, dropping down to 13 million or an 8% reserve level. And in that 22-23 year, 5.8 million, maintaining the minimum of 3%. Next slide. We have to do an analysis of ending fund balance. And what's interesting here is we have to take a look at what categories do we have in our ending fund balance? So the first row here, you can see that's non-spendable. That's our revolving cash in our inventory. Um, then we have some restricted money that we're still holding on to in our ending fund balances. It's gone in the, that 22-23 year. We talked a little bit about our contingency reserves. We usually try to hold on to this money in case there's any additional expenses that have not been budgeted for. But come that 22-23 year, we can no longer do that. You can see the 3% reserve level is around 5.2, 5.3 million. And then our unassigned ending fund balances for this year is 43.8 million, dropping to 25.6 for 2021, dropping again 6.2 in 21-22, and lastly, dropping down to $400,000 in the 22-23 year. So again, you can see these ending fund balances. So there's um, a rule that came out that said, Districts cannot, um, if certain requirements or certain tests are met, the district would need to maintain at the most a 10% reserve level. So we have to show the board how much that would actually end up being. So a 10% reserve level for 1920 is 17.5 million. 2021, it's 17.6. it's 13.6. And 22-23, um, it's 5.7. Those last two years, however, do fall below the 10% reserve level. And then if you look at the very um, bottom rows here, for 1920, we actually have a reserve level over the 10% of 35 million. For 2021, above the 10% reserve level is 17 million. And the potential uses for those reserve levels are purchasing textbooks, our technology costs, our facility needs, and largely it would be used for backfilling deficit spending. In the 21-22 and the 22-23 year, we no longer um, are above the 10%, and so there's nothing left there. Next slide. So we are looking at a qualified budget. To remain in a positive um, status, the financial obligations of the district have to be met in the current year and the following two years. Our district budget is looking to meet its financial obligations in the 2020-21 year and also in the 21-22 budget year. However, the district may not be able to meet its financial obligations in the 22-23 fiscal year. The district therefore is filing a qualified budget. Next slide. We're, um, we're showing here a fiscal solvency statement and this is the first time since I've been at the district that I actually feel like um, this is something that we need to be wary of. So in order to balance the budget and meet our multiple year projections, the board has to draw down unallocated reserves if it's necessary. And as you can see, it will become necessary by that third year out. Any shortfalls um, over the next several years will require a combination of budget reductions and reserve drawdowns in order to maintain fiscal solvency. So in submitting the 2021 budget report as qualified, the Board of Trustees understands its fiduciary responsibility to maintain fiscal solvency for the current year and the subsequent two years. 
Next slide. Um, the, their district is also working on a budget reduction plan. District staff members have provided the Board of Trustees with possible budget cuts that could begin starting in 2021. It could go over the 21-22 year or the 22-23 budget years. Some of these cuts may be one time and some may be ongoing. The 2021 budget and the two following year budgets will be adjusted as additional information is received from the state of California and the federal government. These are unusual times. We um, currently have a budget that is being revised again, and we probably won't know what the final budget will be for 2021 for a few months. We'll be bringing that back to board um, when the information becomes known. Next slide. Another issue that our district is facing is cash deferrals. So for the fiscal year 1920, so our current year, um, the state is actually going to hold on to our June cash payments and not send those out to us until July. We do have enough cash um, in order to make all of our um, June and July payments. So I'm not really concerned too much about that. But as we look forward to the 2021 year, they are now going to move the April, the May, and the June payments over to July. Um, our district will likely not have enough cash to pay the expenses for April, May, and June, and so a TRAN will be needed. Next slide. I'm not gonna go through all of this. I know this is a lot of information. I just wanna point out a few things. Our cafeteria fund, um, our revenue may be going down slightly, um, especially if we um, stay on distance learning. So we're looking at a $2.5 million in revenue. And what that's going to do is cause a deficit in fund 13. However, because there's a beginning fund balance, we will still remain positive through next year. A few other funds that I just wanted to very basically point out is our special reserve fund 17, Fund 20 and Fund 40. In that final um, year, that uh, third year out, we possibly will be moving that cash back into the general fund. The next slide. So our next steps is to adopt the 2021 budget at the June 19th board meeting and bring back any necessary budget revisions within 45 days of the state of California budget adoption. Next slide. And that concludes my report for the 2021 budget. Thank you, Ms. Velasco. Um, very well put. I know it's 10% cut, that's huge. Um, so it's a lot of decisions we're going to be making and um, it, it's, it's tough. But at this point, I'd like to open, open the, the meeting to a public hearing and read any comments that were submitted on this budget report. Ms. Harder, at this point, do we have any comments submitted? Mr. Montoya, we've not received any public comments. Uh, I've, left the, I've left it open during this whole time in case anybody had any comments. There are no comments. Thank you, Ms. Harder. At this point, I'd like to close the public comment section because we don't have any, um, but I would like to ask our board members if there's any discussion or questions uh, for Ms. Velasco. Okay, uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Folly? Uh, Ms. Velasco, first of all, thank you for laying out our scenario here. It's unfortunate that we need to do a qualified budget at this point in time, but all we can go by is what we know at this point in time. And you've pointed out in the slide that there is much unknown, depending on what the state legislature does, for example, depending on what we ultimately get through a passer on the CARES Act money, which has already been allocated to the states, uh, that we just don't know yet. And so, uh, well, I would like to think this is a worst case scenario budget. At this point in time, it's a worst case scenario budget. And um, so hopefully we'll get at least some positive movement. Movement. Well, none of us are naive. We know the situation is serious. But we're all gonna do our best to make sure we continue to provide for our students. Uh, so thank you again. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. It is appreciated. Thank you. And um, we've been waiting for new information coming out, hopefully some good information or just some information to give us direction. Um, are we still looking at receiving some type of information this week? 
Um, we get new information every week for the last three months. <laughs> so yes, I'm, I'm hoping that we do get some more um, information on what the final um, budget will be looking like. If we don't receive it this week, I anticipate maybe next week, but we're, we're waiting. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or uh, from our colleagues? Okay. Thank you very much, Ms. Velasco. Um, looking at the consent calendar, um, I'd like to call for a motion and a second to approve the consent calendar. Approval of the consent calendar. Oops. Sorry, Ms. Glasker. <laughs> Moved by Ms. Glasker and seconded by Ms. Foley. Um, are there any items in the consent calendar that you would like to be pulled for a separate consideration? Okay, seeing no hands up. Um, is there any discussion from the, uh, the consent calendar? I would like to call on Ms. Harder for a roll call vote. Mr. Montoya? Yes. Mrs. Bushy? Yes. Ms. Foley? Yes. Ms. Klasker? Yes. Dr. Jang? Yes. Thank you, Ms. Harder. At this point, we are at uh, board member or superintendent comments. Do we have any board member comments? Ms. Bush, no? Yes, I, I was going to say something. Um, again, thanking everybody for the challenging time that we have been in. But one thing, and, and also thanking everyone for making the year as good for the seniors as possibly could be made. But it was fun this year to go to all the graduations. You know, normally we can't do that. So I watched uh, all of them and I thought it was great fun. Interesting, which we already knew that every school has their own way of, of doing the celebration. And that makes it very special. I thought that was actually very nice, but uh, I thought all of you board members and superintendent had said good things, the principals as well. And uh, anyway, it was fun. It was a little different. I was sitting on my, in my living room watching the graduations. <laughs> but we'll see whether we do it again in August. Okay, any other board members? Ms. Foley? Yes, uh, we're all aware of the protests that are taking place be, because of George Floyd's death. And it's a good reminder that in public education, we have this opportunity to teach students how to participate in a democracy. And I don't mean necessarily with protests, but all the various ways and the skills that are necessary to do so. So this is a great opportunity just as an organization to recommit to our essential role in democracy uh, as public education. It's, you know, it's very serious matter that is this reminder and yet the work is done on an ongoing basis and I appreciate it. And I know that when we return, whatever that looks like, that our teachers will continue to instill those skills and uh, knowledge necessary to be true participants in democracy. Thank you, Ms. Folly. It's true, last week was the last week of school. And this week, we start the, we have the weekend of, uh, of this unrest and it's, uh, it's, it's gonna be hard for our kids, uh, their mental health and uh, but it's so powerful. I've been asking my little cousins that are of age of, um, of high school age and they have graduated what they think in their story and everybody has a story. So I think it's important that we make sure that we ask our youth how they feel so that they can give us their opinion and just get it off their chest. So it's a, it's interesting time. Um, just stay safe out there. And uh, any other comments? If not, we will see you guys on June 16th for our next board meeting. Oh, Superintendent, do you have any comments? No, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good week, everyone. Thank Stay you. safe. Thank you. Thank you.